So it's the start of the Everest Base Camp trek. Just coming out of Lukla, and today we're heading to Fat Ding. Just a small day, maybe three hours. But yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. See Everest, hike at decent altitude. I think it's, we go up to five and a half thousand meters. It takes quite a while, a few rest days, and uh, hopefully some incredible scenery. I mean, it's the Himalayas, but it's so hard to describe how big everything is. There'll likely be a lot of ums and ahs as I move through this trek. It's December now, just before Christmas, and I decided to come now because there's barely anyone on the trail, apparently. In the peak season, March to April, September, October, Ganesh, my guide, was saying that he hates it because you're never alone. There's always people. It's hard to get bunks in guest houses. So hopefully it'll be peace and quiet in December, albeit cold. It's a lot colder than I thought it would be just at the first stop, which is Luca. So, um, expect, I don't know, maybe minus 10, minus 15 at the top, maybe even colder. Ooh, having spent the last two years in warm weather, that could be a bit of a shock, either way. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of this. The plan is to do every space camp and then I've just got a guide so I don't have a porter I'm not with a group um, which will give me the flexibility if I'm enjoying myself and feel good then I can then do the Chola pass which is one of the three high passes to Gokyu Lakes and then come back round the route and that could be really good I think I'm going to have to be very selective with what I film because of battery and space I think there might be a tendency to just stop every five meters because everything just looks so incredible. Yeah, we'll see. Got that train of donkeys that I think we're going to be racing the whole way. Avoid being stuck behind them because then they kick up loads of dust. But you can just always hear the bells. Prayer wheels. Money. I always thought that was for good luck, but Ganesh says that it's for money. Ooh, again, ooh, the scenery. I think there's quite a few of these. Tomorrow we do, uh, I think the two biggest ones, or the two highest ones. It's very peaceful thus far. These quarters are insane. <laughs> Unreal. Just turn the corner and there's a peak called Kubunkan. Kusumkan. Kusumkan. And it's the first like really impressive peak and it's only six thousand meters. That looks a hell of a lot higher. 
Tibetan mantra. Have fun? It's in Tibetan. Mantra. Mantra. Om Mani Padme Ho. It's a mantra, Buddhist mantra. It's in Tibetan. Okay. In English. I just can recognize Om Mani Padme Ho. What does that mean? That's a peace for the world. Okay. That's a bad mantra. Remember the God, first we have to start the word Om. Oh, okay. It's peace. And We've already made it to Pak Ding. We've only been going for... I think we'll to go to Jerusalem Lake, after Monjo. A little bit down. Okay. Nearby the river. So the next town is Monjo. And then we'll go... So we'll go to Monjo and then we'll probably go to another one because we've been going for an hour and a half, two hours? Two hours, two and a half minutes. Maybe two and a half. We've got loads of time. We'll take lunch somewhere in the between. Yeah, and relax. I think it's only going to get better. It's a great example. Because you come through the valley, you turn the corner and then there's these incredible mountains. But they're so commonplace that Ganesh was like, ah oh, yeah, it's this one. It does count as a mountain because it's about 6,300. But bear in mind that I think Mount Elbrus is below 6,000. Kilimanjaro is below 6,000 or around that. If it's 6,000 meters or less in the Himalayas, it doesn't count as a mountain. It's only a peak. So, I mean, that's in its own right. I've got to take a photo of that, but seemingly it's nothing. Fuck, that's good. It's already awesome, and we're not even in, really in it yet. Ganesh was like, ah, oh, the views are really good after Namche. They're already really good. I, I can't wait to see what they're like after Namche. He doesn't want to do it, does he? Come on. He really doesn't want to do it. Ah, I see. Come on, buddy. You can do it.
ของมาพี่ชายชอบน็กส์ออฟสตีลอิสมายซิ่งเข้าสู่ทะเลนาชแนลพาร์คซึ่งซากามาเตะเป็นที่เรียกว่าเอเวอเรสต์ในเกาหลีที่ผมไม่รู้ว่าเป็นไงแล้วในเกาหลีเขาเรียกว่าเอเวอเรสต์ในเกาหลีซึ่งเป็นที่ผมไม่รู้ว่าเป็นไงแล้วในเกาหลีเขาเรียกว่าเอเวอเรสต์ในเกาหลีซึ่งเป็นที่ผมไม่รู้ว่าเป็นไงแล้วในเกาหลีเขาเรียกว่าเอเวอเรสต์ในเกาหลีซึ่งเป็นที่ผมไม่รู้ว่าเป็นไงแล้วในเกาหลีเขาเรียกว่าเอเวอเรสต์ในเกาหลีซึ่งเป็นที่ผมไม่รู้ว่าเป็นไงแล้วในเกาหลีเขาเรียกว่าเอเวอเรสต์ในเกาหลีซึ่งเป็นที่ผมไม่รู้ว่าเป็นไงแล้วในเกาหลีเขาเรียกว่าเอเวอเรสต์ในเกาหลีซึ่งเป็นที่ผมไม่รู้ว่าเป็นไงแล้วในเกาหลีเขาเรียกว่าเอเวอเรสต์ในเกาหลีซึ่งเป็นที่ผมไม่รู้ว่าเป็นไงแล้วในเกาหลีเขาเรียกว่าเอเวอเรสต์ในเกาหลีซึ่งเป็นที่ผมไม่รู้We've gone past Mondro now, and we're just going down to um, the town where we're going to, or the village where we're going to sleep. I think at about 2,600. It's a nice bit of acclimatization before heading to Namche Bazaar tomorrow. Has mostly been this sort of rocky cobblestone path the whole way. So watch your ankles. First tea house. Pretty basic. Oh, hard mattress, but reasonably warm. And I don't know what the price is, but I'll let you know. I think it's I think it's very very cheap. But good first day. Just gonna get my boots off, put my trainers on, maybe change my trousers, and relax. So, thank you very much. See you in a bit. <laughs> All right, day two, reasonably early start, 7:30. From Josale at 2,800 to Namche Bazaar at 3,400. Three hours. About that. So, supposedly a reasonably steep climb. 700 meters in elevation around that 650 pretty cold last night but sleeping bag did me well
300 rupees a kilo from Lukla to Namche Bazaar, apparently. £1.50 a kilo takes us two days. They do it in a day. Eight to ten hours of pretty strenuous stuff. I mean, it's not quite the uh, sulfur miners at Mount Ijen, but what are we doing here? Some sort of morbid who's got the worst job competition. It's a tough, tough life. So that was the national bird of Nepal. I'll ask Ganesh what the actual name is, but it's a very, very colorful, nine different colors type of pheasant, apparently. For all the twitchers out there, Bjork Strand. I think we're about an hour away now. Nice. It's mainly just sort of forest walking, a dusty trail. Imagine in the high season, all the donkeys, the cows, um, and people kicking up the dust. It's bad enough walking behind two people. I'm starting to think that December is a, it's a really good month to come. And I think it's got one of the lowest precipitation rates of any month. It's just clear blue skies at the moment. That's Namche Bazaar. Taken two hours, two and a quarter hours. It's now 9.45. Got the whole day ahead of us. We stopped here for uh, three nights. Most people do two nights, but I was watching um, a company called Ian Taylor Trekking, and they said that the extra night increases uh, the likelihood of not getting any altitude sickness further up. And I had the time, so why not? And yeah, I think it only gets better from here. It's been nice. Fairly easy trek up, um, even if you're coming from Fat Ding. It's a little bit uphill, but I mean, if you have sound body and mind, I think you'll be okay. Right, let's find our tea house. Okay. Not a bad view. Nice. Feels comfortable, very comfortable. Oh, think it might be long sleeve thermal time. <clears throat> we'll see. Right, 